my name is Tommy Crane with the Radcliffe Fire Department, and this is the 411. Um, today, we wanted to talk to you about a lot of, uh, uh, basically, it's holiday safety. Uh, October, November, December are very busy months. Uh, a lot of things going on. It's, uh, you know, fall is here, then the, the first part of winter, a lot of uh, celebrations. Uh, and then uh, for us in the fire service, October is very, uh, very important because it kicks off uh, uh, Fire Prevention Week. And uh, with Fire Prevention Week, you know, the theme for this year is know the sounds of, sa of fire safety. And uh, basically, the two main components of that is the smoke alarm and, and uh, carbon monoxide detector. So we want to make sure that everybody knows those sounds, uh, that they understand what those sound like. So uh, while, while we're here, I'm going to test and, and show you the difference in the sound. Uh, the fire alarm is going to be a lot louder, uh, and it's, you're going to hear three beeps uh, in, in a row. And then the... Uh, and then the smoke or the carbon monoxide detector uh, has a little bit different beep, uh, so you can understand what they sound like. Uh, we remind people to change your smoke alarms uh, every 10 years. So whether it's a battery or whether it's electric, we ask you to change it every 10 years. Um, it's important to make sure that uh, you, you're checking your smoke alarms and your carbon monoxide detectors. Uh, you know, if you have a, a house that has an attached garage, a um, uh, you have a fireplace a, uh, or a uh, propane or, or uh, natural gas furnace. Those are important reasons to have a, a carbon monoxide detector. And of course, every house needs to have smoke alarms. So um, because, you know, carbon monoxide, you can't see it or smell it. And the importance of the smoke alarm is, is that when you're asleep, you're not going to smell the smoke in time to, uh, to get you up and get you out of the house. So it's important to have those two devices in there. So we're going we're gonna to test them so you, you can hear the, the sounds and see what they, they sound like. So, and it will go in a sequence to do the, the smoke alarm and then the carbon dioxide. Fire. Fire. All right, so, so make sure that you're checking your smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors, make sure that they're up to date. Um, and, the, and the other thing too is make sure that everyone in your house knows your fire escape plan. Everyone in your house knows the safe meeting place. And, and that's very important, especially with, with the holiday season when you're gonna have people that they're maybe visiting, that are, come from out of town. Uh, just make sure that everyone in your house uh, knows that fire escape plan. The other thing with, with the weather cooling off, and uh, you know, people like to, maybe they don't want to turn their furnace on, maybe, uh, maybe they, they still want to, to knock the chill off the room. The other thing to remember is uh, with space heaters, uh, make sure that your space heater is clean, uh, it's in good condition, the cord is in good shape. Uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we, we recommend having one that has a tip over protection, so if it tips over, it's gonna shut off like this one does. Um, make sure that you keep a three foot barrier, or a three foot clear area around your, your space heater as well. Now also remember that space heaters and extension cords do not mix, um, and space heaters and power strips do not mix. So a space heater needs to be plugged right into the outlet when you're using it, so make sure of that as well. So uh, we're gonna jump right into uh, talking about, uh, you know, like I said, I know October, uh, November, December, the weather's cooling down. A lot of people, uh, they get outside for outside activities. They like to do what we call recreational burning. Uh, so, you know, it's a great time for, you know, small campfires uh, to, you know, to start a fire in your burn pit. So just some things you remember. We always recommend making sure that you, if you have a burn pit or a, a, a fire pit in your backyard, make sure that you keep it at least 15 feet away from your home or any kind of overhangs or, or trees or bushes or anything like that. Uh, you know, any, anything overhanging like a porch roof or an awning, uh, those, those are important things to remember. Uh, the other thing is remember, do not burn garbage. Uh, basically, uh, your fire pit, your burn pit is basically uh, just, just logs, you know, that, that's it. Just campfire type logs and that's, that's all that you can build, burn. Uh, no building materials, no construction lumber, uh, because that stuff a lot of times is treated or may have, you know, uh, maybe it's been painted or something like that. So. Um, the other thing to remember is in the city of Radcliffe, um, no leaves or grass clippings can be burned. Uh, contact Public Works. Uh, they, we do limb and leaf pickup uh, in October, and so make sure that uh, you, uh, you contact, and that way you can get your leaves picked up so you're not burning them. Uh, if you're out in the county or unincorporated area uh, for an open fire, 
you know, please make sure it, with any fire, uh, open fire, make sure that you're there until it's completely out. Uh, don't, don't walk off or, or leave it still burning. Watch the wind conditions. Uh, definitely watch the wind conditions. Uh, it, can, it can spread the fire uh, pretty rapidly. And uh, large fires, uh, you need to check with your local fire department. Uh, make sure what your requirements are. Uh, make sure that somebody knows if you're going to do a burn. And, uh, you know, so, so that there's, uh, if something does happen, they know what's, know what's going on. Uh, real quick to, to follow up, you know, finishing up October, uh, Halloween, you know, uh, a lot of people will decorate on Halloween. It's actually uh, more, almost as many people decorate for Halloween nowadays as they do for Christmas. So remember when you're decorating for Halloween, when you're plugging in lights, just like Christmas time, make sure the lights, the light strands are in good condition. There's no frayed cords. Don't plug in more than what the manufacturer tells you. Um, your older incandescent lights, uh, you can only usually plug about three strands in. With LED lights, you can plug in more strands in a row, in a series. So make sure that you're checking those, what they allow. Uh, make sure that if you're going to use it outdoor, that it is an outdoor rated uh, type of light or, or decoration. Uh, that's very important as well. Um, when you're setting up your jack-o'-lanterns, your, your, excuse me, your corn stalks, your, your hay bales, your straw bales, make sure that you keep them away from sources of ignition. Uh, your jack-o'-lanterns, we recommend instead of using candles like you did in the old days, use LED lights to, uh, to actually illuminate them. And, uh, and then make sure all those items are not blocking a path of egress uh, or things like that. Um, when you go trick-or-treating, make sure to try to wear bright clothing. Uh, you know, maybe uh, they, a lot of times they'll have like a little LED flashing lights that you can put on. Uh, and always, always walk as a group as well. Um, all right, so let's jump into Thanksgiving. So for most, for most people, the kitchen is the heart of the home, especially during get-togethers uh, and during the holiday season. You know, you're, you bring that family recipe, the, the green bean casserole, things that you're not going to have uh, all the time, that special cake or special dessert that somebody makes uh, only certain times of the year. Uh, and everyone likes to be a part of the celebration. Everybody likes to be a part of the preparation. So some things to remember is uh, Thanksgiving is a peak day for home cooking fires. Uh, it even uh, surpasses Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. So it is, uh, it's the, the number one day for home cooking fires. Uh, in 2018, U.S. fire departments uh, responded to an estimated uh, 1,630 home cooking fires on Thanksgiving Day. So that's, that's quite a bit. Um, and cooking equipment, uh, cooking equipment was uh, involved in almost half of the reported home fires during that period. So um, some important things to remember. As always, uh, stay in the kitchen when you're cooking. When you've got anything on the stovetop, uh, you know, if you've got things boiling, cooking, everything like that, make sure that you stay there. Uh, stay in the home when you're cooking your turkey. Uh, you know, if you've got it in the oven, you're cooking it, you've got it on a timer, we still want you to stay there with it um, and stay there. Make sure that, uh, you know, that you keep it, uh, you're keeping an eye on it. We always remind people, keep children away from the stove. Um, you know, we tell, uh, just like we talked about, making sure space heaters have a three foot uh, a radius protecting them. Keep, keep children and pets three feet away from the, away from the stove and the oven. Uh, you know, make sure that the children stay away from uh, hot foods and liquids. You know, a steam or a splash from vegetables, uh, gravy, hot coffee, uh, you know, can cause serious burns. Uh, make sure that the kitchen area is kind of a, uh, free from like uh, pets, um, toys, you know, try to keep anything that might be lying on the floor, keep that clear of the stove areas, you know, especially. But uh, just kind of keep the kitchen area clear of all those trip hazards. Make sure that any, like, electric cords for crock pots or, or food warmers, um, coffee makers, any of that kind of stuff, that they're up on the counter away from, uh, you know, away from where a child can grab them and pull them down. Uh, you know, even better, uh, have activities that can keep the smaller kids busy, help keep them out of the kitchen games, puzzles, or books, you know, have them in another room. Uh, but, you know, kids do want to be involved. So, so in those times when, when you want to involve the kids with the preparation, find things that are age appropriate. Um, there are things like uh, small kids, like, you know, five and six year old, they can, they can help get the ingredients out of the refrigerator. They can, uh, they can help measure and mix the ingredients together in a bowl. Uh, they can pour, you know, cool liquids into a bowl. They can help mix, wash off fruits and vegetables. Uh, for the older kids, you know, when you get into, you know, 8, 9, and 10, they can help open packages. Uh, they, can, they can help, uh, you know, spread frosting, uh, peel vegetables. 
uh, measure ingredients, uh, you know, set the table. So there's a lot of things, a lot of opportunities. And as, as, the, child's, as the children get older, if, you know, if they're helping cooking, just make sure that they're, they're being safe. Uh, they they want to help cook, help prepare. Uh, just make sure that, you know, uh, just remember those general uh, safety rules in the kitchen. So talking about Thanksgiving, uh, turkey fires are, you know, in the past few years, uh, frying a turkey at Thanksgiving has, has been a big deal. So um, we, we actually, we have one. We were going to do one of the big displays and, and show you what happens when you put a frozen turkey in, in, the, in the hot oil, but we decided not to. But we do want, uh, just visually, we want you to uh, kind of look and, and just make sure. Uh, reminder, keep outdoor fryers, uh, keep, them, keep them off your decks, out of your garage. Uh, keep them a safe distance away from trees and other structures uh, in case there is a mishap. Uh, make sure that your turkey is thawed and dry. Uh, before before cooking, uh, we know that that water and hot oil do not mix, uh, so that's very important to remember. So make sure that your turkey is thawed and dried before you try to put it in the in the pot. Um, make sure that your your oil is at the recommended level. Don't overfill your pot. Um, this one here actually has a um, uh, has has the lines for you to look at for your minimum and maximum amount of oil that you're going to put in there. So you want to remember that so that, uh, because remember when you're putting that turkey in there, the weight of the turkey is going to displace the oil. So if the oil is already hot and it's, uh, you know, and it's in, you put that cold turkey in there, it's going to risk bubbling over. Uh, so, so you have the danger there. Um, the other thing is make sure it's on a nice level surface, uh, just like a grill, you know, don't put, you don't want to put it on a hillside. You want to make sure the level, the surface is nice and level. You want to keep, like this, this hose is actually about two feet long, so you want to keep about two feet between your propane tank and your, uh, and your cooker itself, uh, so, so there's that distance. Um, just like we tell people with, when they're grilling, uh, keep pe uh, kids and pets about three feet away, uh, you know, so that this area is, is clear. You also want to remember that this can be easily be knocked over, so if a child is running through playing or a pet comes running through, I mean, We've, we've got a chocolate lab, she's about 80 pounds. So when she comes running through, she could easily knock this over. So, so we wanna make sure that we keep kids and pets away even after you're done cooking because this is still gonna be hot. So that's something very important to remember. Um, when you get ready to fire it up, just like on a, a, a propane grill, uh, you can use a soapy water solution to check for any leaks, uh, spraying the hose, the connections. Uh, just spray it down after you've turned the propane on and you can you can check for those leaks uh, So, you know, we remind people of that with uh, with grills. We, we also remind them for uh, for using your uh, turkey fryers um, Follow the manufacturer instructions, uh, you know, that's that's the best thing It's what we tell people on just about everything that we remind them the manufacturer has done tests before they sell it So make sure that you follow their instructions uh, We recommend you know wearing maybe wearing goggles uh, to help for the splash when you first put the, uh, you know, in case there's any splashing when you first put the turkey in there, wear some oven mitts to protect your hands and your arms, and even uh, consider uh, having a, a ABC fire extinguisher, a small home fire extinguisher close by. Uh, do not try to spray with water if, if there is a fire. Uh, the water will, uh, just like a grease fire on a stove, the water will push that oil and, that, and the, the grease and uh, it'll just make, actually spread the fire and actually make it worse. So we don't want to do that. Uh, NFPA actually recommends uh, actually uh, opting for a, what they call an oilless fryer. Uh, I've never seen one of those, but they, they recommend using those. They said it actually uses infrared heat rather than oil to cook the turkey. So um, I, I've never seen anybody use one, but, uh, but like I said, for frying a turkey, a lot of the same things that we remind people for kitchen and, and grill safety kind of goes hand in hand with that, okay? So, so those are some things to remember. All right, moving on to Christmas safety, okay? And I know a lot of these things we've talked about uh, in, in different separate videos and, and things like that and separate interviews, but we wanted to just kind of put everything together. We know, uh, like I said, this is a busy time. Uh, everybody is just gathering with family. They want to decorate. Uh, you know, when you're choosing your Christmas tree, you know, we, we showed in a video uh, last year about your Christmas tree. Make sure that the, the, it has fresh green needles. They don't fall off when you brush them with your hand. Uh, before you're placing it in the, in, the, in the stand, if you've gone out to either cut it or, uh, or if you've actually purchased it from a tree farm, uh, cut two inches off the base of the trunk. So you've got fresh 
uh, that fresh trunk that's going to absorb that water. Make sure uh, that you add water to the tree stand daily. Uh, to, you know, don't uh, don't uh, you know let it go without water. Uh, it will it will drink up a lot of water when you first plant it in there. So definitely check it a couple times that first first day. Uh, make sure the tree is not blocking an exit or too close to an exit. We always remind people keep those exits clear. Um, use lights that are they're listed and labeled with an approved like UL uh, somebody like that. Uh, and, and make sure uh, you know that you, you don't use like anything like candles or anything to decorate uh, your tree. Uh, make sure that you keep things like candles. Uh, you know, keep keep candles away from your tree. Uh, fire. You know, don't put it too close to a fireplace or any other heat source. Uh, even if it's a live tree, even keep it away from your heating vents because that air movement is could could help dry it out more. So so try to keep it away from there. Uh, when you're using, when you're decorating your, uh, around your house, inside and outside, make sure that you're using lights and decorations that are approved uh, and recommended for indoor and outdoor use, whatever, whichever situation you're using, uh, because that's, that's how they were tested uh, to reduce that fire and electrical hazard. Um, replace strings of lights that have worn or broken cords. I had to do that last year, I had a strand. They still would light up, but the cord was damaged uh, so there was actually some, some bare metal showing. So we went ahead and, and got a new set to replace those. So make sure you're checking those cords, uh, you know, making sure that you know, you're plugging things in the way they're supposed to be. Uh, when you're hanging the decorations, use plastic hangers and hooks. Don't use metal, don't use like a little uh, tack nails or, um, or little metal hooks. Use, uh, use the plastic so there's not that abrasion on your insulation for your, for your cords. Um, Always turn your Christmas tree lights, your decorative lights off before leaving home or going to bed. Uh, some people will put them on a timer. That's, that's helpful too, so you don't have to worry about unplugging them and turning them off. You can actually just have a timer set, so that, that works as well. Um, do not put your cords or decorations uh, in passive egress, and don't cover them up with carpets because you, you know, you're afraid they'll be a trip hazard. Try to find a place that you can plug them into the side. Uh, some things we also want to remind you is check the condition of your cords that you're going to use. Um, as you can see, this cord here uh, had a loose connection. Uh, something was plugged into it, uh, actually was loose and it started to arc a little bit and actually had uh, some damage down here as well. So we want to make sure that, that our cords are in good shape, they're good, they're solid, uh, all the prongs are in place. As you can see, this one that we, we cut off another power strip, the ground prong was broken. So make sure if you're going to use of the cords, make sure everything is in place and in good shape. Everything's, you know, uh, there's, there's no, uh, no loose connections or any, any bare wires. And make sure, like I said, if it's, if it's supposed to have three prongs and one's broken off, it will still produce, it will still supply electricity through it, but it's not going to have that grounding safety. So make sure that it's grounded safely and don't try to put uh, this cord into here and try to make it fit. Uh, a lot of people do that and bend this back or they'll just tear it off so they can make it fit. Uh, like I said, it will still flow electricity, but it's not gonna have the ground and the safety that it's supposed to. Another thing to remember is when you're decorating, be careful with plugging things in behind uh, chairs and couches and pieces of furniture. In the case of this, uh, this little swivel multi-plug adapter, uh, it was placed behind a, a piece of furniture and uh, it was, the piece of furniture was shoved up against it and over time it actually, uh, pushed enough that it, it uh, made a bad connection and actually started to, uh, to arc there. So, so you got that as well. So remember when you're plugging things in, just please be careful with them, be safe. Um, and uh, you know, remember that when you're getting your, your decorating. Like I said, I know a lot of people decorate for Halloween now, almost as much, uh, they put as many lights and decorations out as you do for Christmas. So the same Christmas rules apply to, to Halloween decorations. Uh, if you're going to use lights or anything around your, your uh, straw bales, hay bales for decoration, make sure that you're, you're careful uh, because, you know, that straw is really dry and uh, will, will uh, start a, a really uh, a fire in, in, a, in a heartbeat. Um, so we're going to finish up with candles. Uh, candles are, uh, you know, some people use candles year round, uh, but this time of year with, you know, in, in all three holidays, Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, and New Year's, all that kind of stuff, uh, candles are used a lot. Uh, they, they smell good, uh, they, they, add, uh, they, uh, they add a nice, um, uh, just a, a nice uh, 
ambiance to the to the to the uh, they're they're pretty to look at. Uh, they make things kind of homey feeling and kind of you know remind people of you know the the days gone by. So so they're aesthetically they're pleasing. They smell good, um, but also you have to remember that at the end of that wick is an open flame. So when you when you're burning that candle, that's an open flame that uh, could start a fire. So make sure you keep uh, a one foot radius around your candle so that there's there's nothing that could you know like loose papers or um, or a curtain that could blow around and, and actually be ignited by by the candle. We have actually had fires where candles have started the fires because there has been something. Uh, in one case, it was a, a curtain that the wind had bl blown the curtain around a little bit and it caught the can the candle caught the curtain on fire. Um, the other thing to remember too is uh, you know when when you're lighting the candles, you know a lot of times the kids may be watching so. Never leave the children alone in a room with a lit candle uh, because they might be curious. We don't want them to pick it up. We don't want them to knock it over. Uh, make sure that your candle is, is on a stable platform. Uh, wherever you put it, that it's on a stable area so it can't easily be knocked off by like a cat that jumps on the counter or, or, a, or, or, you know, or a child that's running through the house and, and accidentally bumps it. So you wanna make sure that as well. Keep your matches and utility lighters out of the reach of children. Uh, keep them up high or even better in a locked cabinet, secure so that the child uh, can't mess with them. Um, but it, it has, you know, even though they're pretty, they smell good, uh, they have been the of, of fires, uh, even fires that have, have had fatalities. So, so make sure, uh, a couple other things you remember is uh, keep the wick trimmed. Uh, you notice these wicks are trimmed really low, about a quarter inch uh, is, is all that you want to leave your, your wick uh, sticking up. That helps them burn uh, smoother and uh, you know, helps them to uh, burn more efficiently. The other thing is when, um, when you have about a half inch of unmelted wax at the bottom is when you need to stop using your candle. And I, was, I know that sounds like you're thinking, well, that's a lot of waste. You know, I'm gonna be throwing away a candle where I still have quite a bit left. But you have to remember that that wax is actually helping absorb that heat. So, um, so it's helping absorb the heat and with jar candles, that's very important because um, if, if the cool air gets to that, that hot jar, then uh, you know, it has a, a good chance of cracking and breaking, or even in, in some cases, we've had fires where the candle has pretty much literally exploded. So we wanna make sure that we have at least a half inch of wax in the bottom, unmelted wax at the bottom, so it'll, like I said, so it'll help absorb that heat. <clears throat> so I know that was a lot of information to cover. Um, we just, uh, we really wanted to, like I said, with it kicking off the holiday season, um, fire prevention, uh, fire prevention week, fire prevention month for us. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that everybody, um, you know, had, a, had some ideas of, of fire safety. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of, you know, during the holidays, a lot of people have family over. Uh, like you said, we wanna make sure everybody knows way out of your house if there's a fire. Um, you know, if, if it's grandma, she's in from out of state, and she's visiting with you, make sure that she knows uh, where, where that, uh, the safe way out, okay? So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, and hopefully this has been uh, educational for you, and this has been the 411 uh, with Radcliffe Fire Department. Thank you.